I, I need to make some remarks. My name's Dale Lawrence Jensen. I'm doing business as Gentech. I used to work over here on the Saturn Apollo and uh, space shuttle programs. Um, I'm talking about rocket follies, wandering in the desert of burning rockets. Um, I'm taking a light patented approach to this. You can all hear me, I hope that's better. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, okay, I thought we were already started. Now we're starting. All right. Um, you know, the Congress is telling NASA uh, to build a heavy lift vehicle and we should not be doing that. I'm going to suggest what we really should be doing instead. Um, so you're going to hear a short, short story about rocket engine history. And uh, then we're going to look at some existing rocket engines and uh, show how heat energy is determined for those engines. And uh, what we can learn is a clearly defined space plan is and how to maintain the United States leadership in space. <laughs> this is the big bad wolf intimidating the three little rocket piggies with his advanced performance rocket engine. You all know the story about the three little piggies. Uh, the first little piggy uh, built himself a house um, out of paperback books, and uh, of course the big bad wolf huffed and puffed and he blew the house down, not because it's a bad book, it's a good book, but it does have some misinformation in it. <laughs> so then the house blew down and the little piggy ran to his friend, his <laughs> brother had built a house made out of hardback books, and this also blew down because uh, of the, and not, it's a very good book, has a lot of good information, but it still repeats this misinformation in there. So then they, uh, two little piggies ran to the, where their brother was living with the uh, NASA people in the big NASA headquarters. But, uh, big Bad Wolf couldn't blow the NASA headquarters down because <laughs> uh, they believed the stuff in the books. Okay, our rocket engine review. This is a J2 engine that we used to go to the moon on the Saturn Apollo vehicle. We've spent one and a half billion dollars developing this engine with a bigger expansion ratio, which doesn't give you any more specific. The space shuttle main engine, 454 seconds of impulse. That's the best engine we have. Um, but it has, you could throw away two thirds of that expansion ratio and still get the same performance out of it. The RS-68, Look at the specific impulse, 314 seconds. This should never have been used for the Constellation, the Ares vehicle, and the Ares 5 vehicle because it's too inefficient. Then we have a kerosene fuel rocket engine. You see the size of it compared with the man, and it only has 323 seconds of impulse. Okay, I'm talking to you. everybody. Who are we? How many people know about specific impulse? Everybody here knows what specific is? Okay, we know what we're talking about. This is an advanced performance rocket engine. And um, it operates at 470 seconds of impulse. It could theoretically get to 481, but we lose some because we feed this propellant off. Where do we get this from? We get 43,000 BTUs of heat energy per pound of hydrogen, but it has to combine with oxygen. If you don't burn it, you don't get any energy out of it. And the same thing with kerosene, and you see how much less energy it has. You can convert that potential energy to kinetic energy, and that's the rocket exhaust velocity you get, and your here's your ISP comes up, exhaust velocity divided by Mr. Newton's gravity. I've plotted this up in this curve here. You see the RS-68, no, this is the kerosene, I'm sorry. This is where the Merlin engine is, this is where it could be. It dumps 80% of the kerosene into the atmosphere unburned. We should not be doing that. Here's the RS-68, you see over here, at two and a half mixture ratio, the J2 and the SM are up here. Why did we go back to that? We should have went up here. The RM-8 gives you, and it's, here's the, those engines rated if they all flew over the space shuttle. The most expensive engine, because it uses more fuel, bigger tank, J2X, SME, and the RMS is the least expensive engine. Here's a chart that shows the comparison of the cost per pound with the space shuttle and the APR, um, the United Launch Alliance vehicle, which uses space shuttle components. Um, so what's the conclusion is that, that 
advanced performance rocket engines is what we should be developing. We should not be building heavy uh, lift vehicles until we have a, a rocket engine that has performance that can take us into space economically. And a rational space policy, we should have developed this advanced performance rocket before we return to the moon or before we go to Mars. And we could use the space shuttle to test that engine. Thank you very much. Woo!